Hi there! Welcome to another bow review and today it's about a takedown version of the Sikai. Um, the Sikai is, I think, known to you uh, more or less. Yeah? Uh, the bow is made by F AF Archery and um, the takedown version, according to Ronald, is uh, modified, so it's a newer version. I don't know if it's any better or worse, I don't know. Um, this works. This is what I can tell you. Um, the rod has, I think it's eight surfaces here and each um, surface is uh, a bit rough so they're very fine lines and um, this um, increases the surface so if it's put in here yeah, you can hold the bow like this. It doesn't slide out and uh, if you take it out, well, I can do it better, just a moment. You hear that? This, um, this is a good fit. Yeah, and uh, in this case, um, we have then, um, or AF Artery has taken a uh, Sikai, cut it in half, and inserted. The feature for the takedown. Um, this is the second edition. The first edition was a little too weak and uh, this one uh, is nominal 35 pounds and um, indeed it's a bit more and this is good. Um, the other was also noted down as 35 but has only 31 or 32. Um, so that's the reason why this is the second edition um, and we come to the to the materials and so in a bit. Um, first of all, let me string this beauty. So. easy yeah okay all right so this is how the bow looks if it's strung um, if you think hmm, reminds me on the Tata yeah these uh, bows are quite similar so this bow is um, according to the Ming dynasty um, I have another bow that's the Spearman Xiaoshao um, also a Ming bow and um, maybe later I can compare these two but first of all today it's about the Sikai. Why should you have a takedown version? Um, you see the bow is yet not small you know, so it's not that handy like for example uh, the Turkish Simsek bow um, Shotzi Pari Plus which is up to here um, so if you want to travel and uh, want to do archery where you go, then it's very handy if you have a takedown version. And uh, another benefit of the takedown version is that you have more weight in the handle. So yeah, there is also vibration. Okay, we come to this in a bit as well. Let's start first with the specs. Uh, the bow has a length knock to knock of 57.5 inches, strung is 51.5. The brace height from uh, from belly to string is 7.25 uh, inches. The arrow pass has a width of 20.3 millimeters. Um, the weight is 500 gram because of the takedown insert here. And um, what else? Bending length um, is only 26.5 because we have here the handle section fading out here and there of around 13 inches and the zia section fades out here so we have here nine inches each side and that's the 26.5 inches bending length so did i forget something no the um, max draw of this bow is 34 inches um, unfortunately, I cannot show you because uh, I'm small. 
and um, but it's good to know I have uh, taken the drawing curve and up to 34 inches it was more than it was 55.1 uh, pound at 34 inches that I have measured on my rig okay what else nominal strength 35 and it's a bit more which is fine for me yeah so if you order a, a bow at af or ali bow they always have these uh, staggers uh, at five pound range so 20 25 30 35 40 and so on and um, so i ordered a 35 bow and the first edition was um, noted as a 35 but indeed it was more like a 30 so it has a strength of 31 or 32 pound at 28 inches and uh, so this is the second edition which is then more than 35 pound and which is very good and uh, we can measure it now how much it is in beads I know um, the first rubber band is 28, the second 29, and the third is the yellow one is 31 inches. And I always measure the back. It's 38.98. So it's good. <laughs> and then I go directly to the 31. Forty-four seven eight. Good. And so I think now yeah, it's around thirty-nine forty. So um, according to Bamboo Archery Table, the arrow weight should be twelve grain per pound. So means um, I would be fine with four hundred eighty. Um, I have arrows here that are below that. AF Archery doesn't um, give any recommendation, at least not on their website. Uh, so I will test it out. So the heaviest I have are 489, so quite close. Yeah, that would be then the 12 grain per pound at 40 inches, uh, 40 pound, and um, that would be good as a starting point. Um, regarding the materials, uh, the veneer is golden sandalwood and since this is natural material it always looks differently. So the upper limb is more, has more texture and the lower limb is more uh, calm. Um, inside we have a bamboo core and a stable core. The so stable core is always uh, some kind of carbon. And I don't know if it's a cross carbon or a one directional carbon, so I don't know that. And we have bare pore glass on each surface. And in the handle section, I think it should be golden sandalwood as well. And it's just the other side. So here you have the one uh, view, and this is then the other view. And um, the overlay. I'm not sure which, it's, that's also golden sandalwood. I guess it could be some kind of maple, but I really don't know. It's guessing. We have uh, aeroplast protection as an inlay on both sides, which is nice. And um, the string, um, I don't know either. Um, it could be fast flight, but don't nail me if it's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have reinforced tips. Um, it's too even to be horn, so I think it's some kind of epoxy or resin something. Um, this is fine for me, it looks good. Um, the surfaces here um, are not 100% good, so we have here two spots that are not even, but okay then. And um, the upper limb has here um, an area where it's yeah, some kind of um, fog 
yeah so it's below uh, so there's nothing rough or something it's below that layer so uh, nothing can be done anymore so it happened during production uh, good what else this is a Ming Dynasty style bow and um, Ming Dynasty looked it up um, via Wikipedia Ming Dynasty was in the mid 14th century up to the mid of 17th century so about uh, 300 years and followed by the king queen queen um, what we call them the Manchus and um, yeah so it's a very nice bow so I like this golden sandalwood um, if you have followed uh, Ronald um, you have maybe seen his comparison of is it any beneficial if you have golden sandalwood instead of just bamboo uh, of course there's no benefit of golden sandalwood except the optics um, bamboo is nice as well but uh, this one looks in my eyes even nicer because it reminds me somehow of a tiger fur and this is very nice so we have these bright spots here some kind of all over uh, so maybe this is then a tiger in the snow all right and of course i have a matching quiver set for this one because uh, my first um, ming bow was the spearman shao shao and uh, meanwhile i think it was three years ago or so or two i don't know um i have got this bow and hide and fu has helped me to get this beautiful quiver set um made by a, Chin a chinese artist and um, so here we have of course the quiver and uh, there are magnets here on the bottom so usually they shouldn't slide out but indeed something they do if they don't hit hit the magnet yeah so um, we have a little rattling but overall this quiver is very nicely done yeah this is the quiver um, comes without the belt and this is the bow holder yeah, we have here always these hooks and you can adjust it a little not much but um, it's possible somehow yeah. it's relatively heavy and uh, for today um, I won't use the bow holder but nevertheless I will show you that it fits in so that's the fitting of the bow in the bow holder yeah on the belt it would probably look like this this is what i meant uh, you cannot really adjust it so this is a little loose if you have it the same height or you can just hang it that way yeah and um, you can see here a deeper a closer look so he has done it quite nicely the golden painting this is how it looks inside. Uh, don't ask me how much I pay for it. it. It was something, so it was not not cheap. So similar uh, in the direction of uh, what I've paid for um, the Korean um, fiver set. All right, and what else? The bow comes with two nice sleeves so these are not only a sleeve they have also this um, this other fabric here inside which is very soft so it dampens a little and if you put them together somewhere then uh, the limbs are well protected very nice all right and to tell you more about the conditions we are currently in um 47 uh, percent humidity and 28 degree uh, celsius which is it feels quite warm for miguel it would be just 
easy peasy weather for me it's phew. right did i forget something no i think this is all fine okay then let's shoot all right uh, first of all i would like to show you the handle fitting so it looks very good feels very good um, it has distance here which i like and we have a soft leather which has a good grip at least at these temperatures where you get sweaty a little bit and um, yeah overall very nice feeling first um, i shoot the heavy arrows Oh, maybe here this is the best point to knock. Okay, forward cutter. Still a bit up left. Yeah, it's always the same. And here we have now very nice wooden arrows um, that have been created by Martin. Aha! Fly much better. Very good. Yeah, nearly center shot. And this is another Martin, so Martin Spurry, and uh, the others by Martin um, Hanusch. So these are the lightest ones. Center shot. I show you. These are the first, the heaviest ones with a spine of 700. Um, the lightest ones have a spine of 500. And um, the wooden, I don't know really. Um, the weight here is 489 or so. These wooden arrows have 440 and the, um, these two fledged dines are um, 400 grain. And so, uh, yeah, result wise, these arrows fly best, followed by the wooden arrows and last one with the heaviest ones. So I think this is because of the spine. So. Um, the weight is okay yeah, for the bow, um, but honestly, I didn't feel a difference in the shooting. And we do this again now from the 10 meter line. All right, now this is more or less 11 meter. Sun's coming out. Mm -hmm. Still much up left so I try to compensate uh, regarding uh, the feeling the draw is very nice so very smooth but there's vibration afterwards so no hand shock but vibration so if I pull the string one two, three, four, done. So there's relatively much, um, but it's not annoying. It's just one, two, three, four, now gone. And the sound, very nice. So very nice dark sound. And um, yeah, what, um, 
we can do is put silences here into the string but uh, regarding speed it can have a little effect but if you are shooting like me in the garden this is absolutely no issue at all Now the vibration is gone. I hold now the bow as long as I feel the vibration. Yet. And with these ones, the lightest ones, is it more? Obviously not, not really. Honestly, I think um, 12 grain per pound is a little too much. It already it also feels good with 10 grain per pound. Um, the Xiaoxiao is uh, fine with 9 grain per pound. Um, so I think 12 grain per pound is relatively high. Um, why has Ronald created this table? Um, he is a dealer and um, when people come back and claim that the bow has broken somehow, then he asks of course uh, why or how could that happen? And obviously uh, he had a lot of cases where people shot two light weighted arrows. And um, if you shoot an arrow that is too light weighted, um, there can, um, the bow bow still um, stores energy that has not been used by the arrow in the bow. And um, so this can cause damage over the time. And that's the reason why he has um, I think he get a little over the minimum and so he is on the safe side. Yeah. Um, I ordered the bow uh, via bamboo archery and so if I would claim um, that something happened with the bow, Ron would ask me how much the arrow weight was that I have used. And um, then it's beneficial if I have used the 12 grain per pound um, according to this table. Although I feel that 10 grain per pound is also good and the feeling is fine. All right, what else? Um, shooting is nice. Um, best results are with the 400 grain arrows. Um, the um, shooting is from, from the draw curve very nicely and um, I enjoy very much that it's stronger than 35 pound and it looks beautiful despite um, the little flaws that we do have but uh, yeah it's like it is. <laughs> I'm happy that the bow is finally here and yeah so handling is very nice, stringing is easy and so um, I do a little more shooting. Ooh. Reverse shooting. One leg shooting, beneficial if you have an even surface. I'm sorry about the planes. Today, the last days they have been flying minute-wise again.
So the wooden arrows fly very nice too. Yeah, that was the center shot. If you want to simulate horse riding, um, yeah, so I've noticed that um, the horse arches are standing while the horse is moving. And so they try to um, keep a steady position and don't do this, but stay on the, um, I don't know the English word for it. So they stand in and um, the saddle is just a bit below them. So they're not really doing that move, movement. They're standing like that, lean forward and shoot. <laughs> so, first of all, the heavy arrows with 489 or 490. Let's say 490 grain, which is a little more than 12 grain per pound. Hundred sixty one. Draw length is about approximately twenty eight inches. Hundred sixty. Hundred sixty three. Next one. The arrows, um, the wooden arrows with um, 440 grain. 163. Duplicated, so 163. Hundred sixty seven. Duplicated, 167. And the 400 grain arrows. Hundred seventy-two. Duplicated, 172. Duplicated. Um, that is an easy one, <laughs> 172. So 172 feet per second um, is the maximum speed I get today with um, an arrow weight of 400 grain at a um, draw length of 28 inches. If you uh, pull more, so up to the 34, then you get other values, of course. Although you need to adjust then the arrow weight, of course. Yeah, so you have then still the approximately um, 10 grain per pound or so. And uh, that gives then your value for the arrow weight. Um, so we recognize that if we have 90 grain more arrow weight, we lose approximately 10 feet per second at speed. Okay. Resume, what do I think of the beautiful Sikai takedown version? So first of all, uh, it's a very beautiful shape. The wood is very beautiful as well, even if it's not that um, full of pattern on the lower limb, but that's fine for me. Um, I like um, the pattern that is shown. Uh, as I said before, it reminds me on tiger fur. But of course, yeah, I have a little fantasy here. Um, 
the build is not flawless, which is a bit of a pity. But uh, yeah, I need to be a bit critical because um, I have bows that I have paid less and they are just flawless. There's nothing to complain about. Even the F uh, Tata version of $425 uh, has no flaws. This one has. Um, so we have here this cloudy effect here, there, um, where else? Here are the spots. We have cloudy effects here and there and on the bottom as well here. Uh, so, and here, if I didn't mention it before, yeah, this and that. Uh, so there is a tiny bit. Um, the string mm, could have been a bit more dense here, so the wrapping. Um, but the center serving is nice so far. And um, yeah, it's always beneficial to know what kind of string you have, <coughs> just in case. Um, I very often miss this information and I need to guess. Yeah. Uh, what I like as well are the AeroPass protect, uh, yeah, protections, so the AeroPass inlays. Um, you can see here that I have touched the bow a little bit. Um, the leather in the handle is very nice. Um, the take down feature is working very nicely, so the bow doesn't fall off if you have just inserted, so you can string the bow very easily. This is all good. Um, regarding the sound, so this sound is very nice, so dark and full. Uh, if you release, then the tone is a bit high pitched, so there is a, it's, it sounds a bit different if you shoot. Um, we have a little vibration after the shot. Uh, it's not annoying, but I notice it. And um, yeah, if this bow, the Sikai, is nicer than the Shao Shao from Spearman, um, we would need to find out in another video because then I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So from today's Bahad experience, I don't know yet. Yeah, so I can't remember if the bow has vibration after the shot. Um, but I know that the Xiao Xiao, Xiao Xiao is a little shorter and it has no uh, stable core, yeah, so no carbon core inside. It has a lot of bamboo inside, outside and uh, glass so, and can be shot with 9 grain per pound. This is what I still remember and uh, yeah, but as I said, side by side comparison. Uh, for today, uh, it's a very nice bow. The bow is working very nicely. Um, shooting is very nice, yeah, and um, here the uh, the tips are done excellently, so there is nothing to complain about the tips and this transition area is nice too. There are only these flaws on the, um, the glass layers, I would say. Here it's not the wood, it's the glass and um, I don't know if it's the bare paw quality in the moment, but uh, it's not the wood. Okay, yeah, and uh, what else did I mention? The speed is good, yeah. Um, I remember that the Turkish hornbow was faster, so it was around uh, 180, and the UN uh, Turkish bow was 179, so yeah, you can calculate so around that, so they are a bit faster. Um, always in um, with re respect to the arrow weight that is needed for the bow. Yeah? So you cannot take the same arrow for all bows. So you always need to um, keep that in mind. Yeah, here we are relatively heavy. So the Turkish bows could have been shot with 9 grain per pound. And here we had uh, at least 10 grain per pound. Yeah. And I'm quite sure if I would use the 9 grain per pound, then I would be equally fast 
uh, as with the Turkish bows. And so the design is very nice. So Ming design is very nicely looking and it's similar to the Tata design. Right, so thank you very much Ronald um, for organizing this bow to me, testing it and um, for the hassle you had with the second order and the shipping and so on. So thank you very much. And F, thank you for building the bow twice. <laughs> and I hope that um, the next bows you produce uh, don't have these cloudy effects in the glass. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Um, have a pleasant week. Enjoy archery. I will have a hopefully nice archery event starting Thursday. And so I'm looking forward to this. And then thanks everybody for watching. And as always, fingers crossed for our friends in Ukraine. Thank you. Bye-bye.